Welcome back to another video. My name is Flip. I'm Element. And we get together every week to catch up to some of our favorite Asian dramas. It's startup time. Startup! It seems like we know who Daomi is in love with, physically. Who <laughs> kind of face is that? Physically? <laughs> it seems like we know who Daomi is in love with after solidifying their relationship with the longest kissing scene I've ever seen to date. Yeah. Um, it seems... Did it, did it surpass it's okay not to be okay? No. I mean, I think that scene mm. in particular was a little bit more sexy, but this the kiss itself... The kiss was passionate. Yeah, very I mean, passionate. It's really refreshing to see what a kiss might actually look like in these uh, dramas. It's definitely leveled up, you know, since the last time we've seen kisses, especially it's okay to not be okay. Mm. I mean, before then when we would watch J dramas, K dramas, or Chinese uh, shows, the kisses were very tame, very reserved. It's really, it's really just kind of the the, the movement of the lips when mm. the kissing is uh, enacted, and yeah, it looks look pretty good to me. Yeah. But does that actually mean that she is in love with him? I think so. But before we get to all of that, go to the link in the description below. Get your Dibox snacks and all of your merch. Take in all of the South Korea. Oh yes. So really quickly from episode seven, you know, they're they're on their way to finding out what Samsung wants to do with their image recognition software. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have this revelation as we touched on uh, earlier with Dalmi. Uh, Grandma asks, who do you who would you choose? Mm -hmm. The letters, the the person who wrote the letters 15 years ago or the person you met now? Now we get the partial answer midway through the episode and at the very end she kind of elaborates further, right? Mm -hmm. If she had to choose, she would choose the person who wrote the letters 15 years ago. Uh, and by the end of the episode, she was kind of like, yeah, but the Dosan I know in person, sometimes it feels off, but when those moments are on, her heart flutters. So it like even though we got that that question answered, mm -hmm. there's still not a definitive answer. <laughs> yeah, and I think that's what's so interesting about the dynamic here now because obviously Han Je Pyeong is in love, like mm -hmm. madly in love with Absolutely. her. He can't throw away over his face. He can't throw away her plant. Like you know, he went through all of that stress, and he, he you just can see in his face and his nuances, his body language. He doesn't know what to do with himself other he than can't to, accept it. Yeah, first, right? other than to revert to just being rude. It kind of falls apart when Dalmi decides to Stand not up to him, right? Yeah, exactly. And then it's his his heart is like melting right at that moment. So he doesn't know what to do with it. But I do feel sorry about Grandma Choi. Her vision yes. is uh, slowly deteriorating. I That kind of touches me personally because I myself have this disease called uh, retinitis pigmentosa where you know the peripherals start to close in and you kind of start to lose your vision in the peripherals and it just starts to yeah, slowly shrink right in. So I can't see anything around here. But uh, it's, uh, you know, it's something that I have to deal with, but this was really cool. They developed an app. What, what was it called? Nungil. Nungil. It's, uh, it's definitely an app that you would probably appreciate. Maybe mm. if you had like phones on either side of you that could see um, your peripherals for you. But in any case, it's to help visually impaired. It's using uh, Dosan's image recognition technology uh, along with Yongsil. Young Sil is the personality, the, the Google yeah. assistant type mm -hmm. of voice assistant, and so Young Sil will look at the camera, get that image recognition data, and then um, spit that back out to the person who is using Noongil. And so, like, if I were to say what's in front of me, you would say a stupid ass. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, but some case, dude, yeah. some dude that's smiling with uh, some crazy hair right now. Yeah. That all kind of leads into a viral marketing tactic that uh, that blows up. You know, yeah, with, uh, with the legendary thought? baseball player like doing his interview, you know, uh, the Ho? one percenter is <laughs> with the one percenter working in the background to do their viral marketing. Uh, it's it's blowing up like I think there's some success in the horizon here. Absolutely. I did not expect that to work, but, um, you know, you, you can't really tell in these in these instances whether or not like you reach out to a famous baseball player if he's going to see your message. Mm -hmm. um, or beyond that, if he's going to recognize the, the the kid in the photo and if he's gonna care. Yeah. Uh, but that all worked out for them and it got them at least 10,000 DAU daily average users. 
And they're on their way, and, and Daomi is kind of worried now. She has to worry about server costs and upkeep of all of those users. Having those users, I think, is more valuable right now than having a good pitch because, you know, a lot of advertisers want eyes on their product. Yep. Well, let's also touch on what it took to get there. There were some harsh realities between NJ and Dalmi. I actually appreciated NJ's role in these past couple of episodes. Yeah. She did speak some truths to Dalmi about the, tr the reality of being a, a CEO. Yeah, she said a lot of things that Dalmi needed to hear. Now, a lot of those things, when you when you look at it from the lens of a big sister, separated from, from a divorce and yeah. wants to prove that she made the right decision, mm -hmm. obviously she's quite, quite, you know, evil in that regard. She's ruthless, you know, she has what it takes to be a CEO, but I appreciate it because Dalmi is highly emotional with the decisions that she makes. Yes, she makes the right decisions here and there, but like she gave most of the shares to Dosan where it really should have been her that got it. So she, she's kind of making decisions from an emotional level. I don't know if that'll hurt her in the long run or it will, you know, preserve, her, you know, the friendships that, that they're trying to preserve. So. We shall see. Well, I think that's what what's great about this dynamic. I think Dami is going to make a lot of decisions based on her emotion and her moral compass, which is kind of different from Jay's. And uh, what what I appreciate the most about in, what In Jay tells uh, Dami and like her pointers and her advice mm -hmm. is that there's a lot of pragmatism in there. It's something that Dami needs to hear in order for her to kind of temper her decisions. But she's still going to make the decisions of the girl on the swing. Oh, yes. Now Miss Yoon has finally kind of, you know, gotten a little bit more information that they are actually sisters. And so she's kind of like, wait a minute, so maybe the girl in, in the swing is actually Dalmi. It's interesting too, because Miss Yoon is like, you know, looking at what Inje is doing and she's like, yeah, she's doing this for the money. I mean, it makes sense. You know, mm -hmm. everybody wants to work for money, but like she expected something different. It doesn't capture the story of the logo. Absolutely. And now that she has this extra information about Dalmi, she's like, oh, it makes sense because she knows why she wants to do this. She wants to better people. She wants to help people. And it's not just about the money. That's just running true to all of the themes that Dami and Dosan, that group of people in Samsung, Samsung, <laughs> Samsung Tech, um, Chul, we have not even highlighted Chul Song. I just want to take a, a brief second just to shout out Chul Sun here. He is like, so hilarious and so funny yeah, in every episode. He breaks it down, you know, like when I'm about to have a tear in my eye and something funny happens with his <laughs> <laughs> His fake glasses. Yeah. Amazing and fun stuff. But some really quick points about what Dami and Dosan went went through with morning group yeah that was intense that that all happened and culminated to the kiss of course right but this guy is a snake i mean absolutely these two people he's like he's like the preeminent example of a shark mm. you know an entrepreneur who now i wouldn't say like all i think he's like the you know worst case scenario mm -hmm. of an entrepreneur who is also a shark you know he's trying to exploit youth workers get manual labor out of them and then and you know outsource that work mm -hmm. um but also kind of steal the solutions that are proposed to him uh but you know he got what was coming to him at the end but at the same yes yes at the same time trying to play this advocate for for dreams of youthful entrepreneurs and mm -hmm. on the other hand, you know, exploiting them. Mm -hmm. But he did get what he deserved at the end. Absolutely. So uh, it was revealed that Dami was actually working with Han Ji Pyong. Mm -hmm. he, he warned her, he was like, record this meeting. And now she had enough fuel to blackmail or mm. negotiate a deal where they would get their, their CSR funding um, out of their budget. And, and what is a CSR? Well, we looked that up <laughs> afterwards. It's the corporate social responsibility budget, which, you know, a lot of companies around the world set aside some of their income to help, you know, welfare and to help the weaker sectors of society. And mm. in this case, you know, Morning Group had a CSR budget and it went towards helping a startup. And because of this, uh, Morning Group gets to retain their image. Yeah, and Sansam Tech gets to kind of, you know, are rescued because they need these funds more than ever now that their user base is increasing for Nungil. Oh, now, the biggest thing right now 
You know, yeah. we, we asked whether she would pick the person that wrote the letters 15 years ago, but then she also loves the person that is Dosan now. Now all of these things, thank you Charity Cha for that comment of yours in our last video. Talking about these letters that Han Jip Yong has been writing notes, you know, to help Dami along her pitches and all of that stuff. His handwriting is all over those papers that is just causing this revelation that maybe she's got it all wrong. Uh, absolutely. And at the end of uh, episode eight, we get this scene where she's putting two and two together. We don't actually know what she's what she thinks of it. I think we know. She, she finds the handwriting. Mm -hmm. she, she says they have the same handwriting. The puzzles are coming. She together. says that they have the same birthday, but she doesn't she doesn't come out outwardly and say, oh, no, it's actually Han Jip Young who wrote it. He was she's I think she's just in that middle ground or that gray area mm -hmm. right now where she's mm -hmm. like, are they actually brothers? They have the same handwriting, same birthday. Like, what's going on here? I don't think she's she's fully solved it. I don't think she's fully solved it yet, but she's definitely a little bit more curious. Yeah, absolutely. And she's going to be noticing things moving forward, like his nuances, his mannerisms, how he talks, how he writes, of course. You know what? I find myself rooting for Han Jip Young. Uh, I don't know why, <laughs> because maybe I, I can't relate to the buff nerd. <laughs> <laughs> Dosan, who happens to be like just a super buff, like you could tell, he's like I mean, ripping out of his clothes. I mean, not everything is, is looks here. Mm -hmm. I relate to obviously Dosan because I'm, uh, you know, I'm in that world as well, and mm -hmm. I'm not this rich investor. Ah, uh, that's so, a good point. I, I mean, mean, I'm in the marketing world, so I relate a little bit more to Han Jip Young, but yeah, mm -hmm. but I but I root for Dosan only because like. He's not kind. He's probably kind of like not part of this evil scheme that they cooked up, you know, back then. He's kind wow. of like a victim himself. Yes. Because he got he got dragged in. He was like, "Fine, I'll do this." Because I used my name mm -hmm. and I can't escape this. <laughs> so that's why I'm rooting for him. But he is adding to more fuel to the fire and digging it yeah. deeper and deeper. I mean, it was only supposed to be a one night affair. Now what, it's <laughs> what you're gonna do when Susie comes knocking at your oh, door? Oh yeah, well, you're you gonna know, fall for again. Susie. Susie, her acting brilliance is just in full on display. Yeah. Like we can't get enough of it. Like just. The ease and elegance that she does when she is either smiling, she's either laughing, or she's going a little crazy, banging around her head all over the place. Just her like little nuanced you like things that she does. Welling of the eyes, they're turning red. She's kind of her nose is 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 swelling up with redness and mm -hmm. and you know a little bit of snot here and there, but like that's actually really good acting. I think that's real. That's really uh, genuine, and you feel it. Like I mean, I. I'm tearing up in every one of these episodes, so Susie's just, just a so. great actress. Mm -hmm. But in any case, that'll wrap it up for our recap and reaction to episode seven and eight of Startup. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, thumbs up, leave a like, and if you want to see more from us, subscribe, turn on the notifications so you know when we post new videos. And as always, we'll see you in the next one.